Hello everyone, my name is Tucker, and welcome back to our Russian Fishing 4 float fishing character. So today, I came back to uh, Oldberg after our failure at uh, Belaya yesterday, and want to go for what I can, aiming mainly for carp species here today. So I'm over here at 36.58, 36.57. I want to go to about a meter deep on our float rod. We fished here a few times. Uh, this time I'm going to use worm instead. The wind is going to make it interesting today. I shouldn't use the thin floats. I should use the thicker floats. And I should use better hooks as well. So I'm going to use sweet dough on one, red worm on the other. Just kind of compare it. I forgot to change the depth on this one. It's been a day today, folks. Ran out to get dinner uh, before recording. Got to where I was going and realized I didn't have my wallet, even though I put my wallet and my phones in my pocket right before I left, or at least so I thought but evidently just flat out missed my pocket with my wallet. So, been a day. All right, <clears throat> I'm gonna go ahead and put uh, Gibble Free Mix on here and I'll put Sweet, I'll put Red Worm on the bottom rod as well too. And as you can tell, the floats are just blowing all over the place. There's an 11 meter second wind out there. So very strong winds today gonna make it hard to know if we have a fish on or not winds weren't blowing quite that bad when I logged in so this may be more of a bottom fishing day than a float fishing day to be honest not the best conditions And if they're going to stay this way, I may go over to Mosquito. Cut a decent gibble right off the bat here, though. actually a fish on there there was couldn't tell there was a fish on there because the wind was blowing so bad basically put that in the point of the heart and it blew all the way over here to the log decent kilo chub on sweet dough interesting I don't know. To me, this green stuff always looks like a heart. I should have switched Rod 1's float over to the wider float, too. Forgot to do that. I think Rod 1's actually sitting on the ground right now. got blown into the ground more than anything. Almost should be on the other end of the island doing this and letting the floats blow out to the end of the line. Kind of like it's a river. Moving around so I can see them. The 
I do like fishing right here with the sunrise coming up. Definitely adds some beautiful graphics. Wanted to try that. That's one tip I got from some folks in the comments. We're casting out, holding shift, and looking down. It tends to help you get a little bit further out. My experience with that seems to be in just in general with shift and float or uh, shift in at least telestick fishing is you overcast your ability and actually bounce back. So what I mean by that is if you watch and you cast out, you'll get as far as you can. And with the wind, it it's kind of hard to see. It bounces back towards you. Folks were saying if you look down, that doesn't happen as much. My experience has been it, looking down doesn't really help, but wanted to give it a try at least. The wind today blowing into me isn't going to help it at all. I was looking to see if it's supposed to be windy all day. Right now, I, I'm thinking I'm going to go to Mosquito if it's going to be like this, because... This is not going to be fun fishing. Yeah. And with how bad the wind is being here at Oldberg, I, there was a fish on the line there and I couldn't even tell because of the wind blowing the float into the sh shoreline so much. I'm going to go ahead and go back over to Mosquito. We'll sell these four fish before we head over there. I think that's that's in our best bet from uh, making silver perspective. This I may have to cut this episode a little bit short. It's about 8.15 my time. There's something I like to do at 9 o'clock on Thursday evenings, so... We'll see, but four fish, seven silver, that uh, one kilo chub was worth four and a half, and the gibble carp was worth almost three, so not, not a horrible experience there, not a horrible amount of uh, experience and silver, but let's go back over to Mosquito. I know we spent a lot of time at Mosquito, but we need to get some silver up so that we can look at getting a bolo rod is really my next purchase and i haven't done enough research to really pick the one i want to look at look for yet but not really changing anything same baits that we had before i evidently don't have the clip i thought i had on the bottom rod because I just yeeted that way out there I do want to check the hook that I have on rod one I can't remember if I switched it that was a nice pull the float out and all of a sudden the sun comes over and blinds you yeah it's still on a size 20 hook Switch that over. There we go. Getting to where I can see my floats because of the reflection off the sun in the water. I 
until the sun goes down. I'm going to have to aim more at the boat. Or the sun goes a little bit higher in the sky. Sun's not going to be going down anytime soon since it's 6.30 a.m. 29.5, I think that said, for our skills on bait harvesting. So we're getting towards 30. Thirty unlocks Semolina, if I remember correctly, which is good for carp, especially gibble carp, in my experience. Roaches, that type of thing, and then thirty-five unlocks garlic dough, which is a good bream bait. Right now, looking at the VK site, before we got started, all the bream spots at Oldberg were on garlic dough. nibbles on both rods missing the monofilament rod I want to get that onto a normal float I had it on one of the slim floats from trying to get days I didn't look at the cafe before we started even probably should have Okay, perch. I do have pretty big hooks on, especially for mosquito, but I think it's worth it. Do want to be a little bit closer to the reeds now that the sun is out of that area so I can see. Still forgot I don't have a clip on this. Or if I do, it's a long clip. Four on this one. Sweet dough. Name of the game is silver. I'd like to have two to three hundred silver before getting a bolo rod. My guess is that's going to be the range I'm looking at. I do have the free starter reel. I believe it's a 3.2 kilo reel. That's going to be over here on this 2.7. We could take the... Ooh. I don't know how I missed that fish. Um, We could take... The Lacerti, and I missed another fish? Are you kidding me? We could take the Lacerti off the bottom rod, but I'd like to keep that rod active as well. All right, game. I don't know what you're thinking, but that was a bite, and that should have had a fish on it. I'm getting angry.
This is a good fish. I will miss whatever's on the other rod to pull this one in. Big perch. One point two kilo perch. Four hundred experience points. Did miss the bite over on two for now. Looks like it's back though. Good. Probably one of the fake out bites anyway. Like, <clears throat> excuse me, like that one. <clears throat> My uh, allergies are starting to kick in today. With the temperature going back up, I think something started bugging me. Voice just completely went away. Obviously got something on our bottom rod there. I want to see if I can get whatever this is on two, finally. Four hundred gram gibble, sixty nine experience points. Nice. One was swimming away, but Evidently not actually attached to it, but can drag it across the lake. That's a decent fish. Still don't have a clip. It had a 10 meter clip on it at least. Honestly, thought it was like a 15 meter clip with how far it looked like it was going. Decent crucian. I can get it over the log. Love the cheaty float cam. Can't even see the float in the reeds, but I can see it on the float cam. Oh, I thought that would have drug it out. I think I might be able to just barely see it. Perch. Oh, I do have red worm on. That does make sense. Ah. That one I'm okay with missing. I wasn't anywhere close to the rod. Let's go back over to Sweet Doe here. Well, the perch are nice. That's not really what I want to go after. You want to run over here and take a quick look at the cafe to see what the orders are. Gibble, roach, sleeper, there's bleak. Uh, seven big perch. I doubt we'll get that, even if we kept going. But possible with the gibble and roach order with where we are. Good to know. I'm going to take advantage of being at Mosquito to run over here to the kitchen and grab some food. I'm 
and come back just in time to see the float go down without a fish on it. Words I want to say that I shouldn't. Unlock Semolina, we're up to 30%. Nice. Another big perch, but not big enough for the cafe order. There's a bite on one, but that rod is too far away by some stupid reason, and I missed it. Let's go, what do I need to make semolina? Semolina is semolina milk and sugar. So we come over here to the grocery store. We need milk. We need semolina. And we needed sugar. That's powdered milk. I always have problems finding salt and sugar. There it is. Not what I expect sugar to look like. So it did use the full 10 servings of sugar there. We'll have some leftover sugar now, but I'm okay with that. Make a little bit of semolina porridge. Run back down. Probably should have left this rod in the water, not the other ones. And let's go ahead and put the semolina porridge we just made on the bottom rod. Semolina, in my experience, is good for gibbles, roaches, carp in general. I think the last time I caught a trophy gibble here was on Semolina. Small common roach there on Sweet Dough. Angry. We do get thirty instances of the bait from it each oh come on we're freaking out loud Saw the fish even come out of the water there, but it wasn't attached. As soon as the head came above water, it popped off. Got our first bite over there on Semolina.
I knew it was a fake out. I knew it. Feels like a small fish. Looks like a small fish. <laughs> Very tiny common roach. 65 gram common roach on a one off hook. That's going to be how today goes, I guess. All right, buddy. Dog can tell me I'm getting frustrated now. There we go. Small gibble. can try the floats right in my head. Since the one on the left, the white top float, is actually the rod that's on the right. I try not to do that. It happens. Wind's calm. I do want to try the casting over a hundred percent looking down as well and see if I can see a difference. <laughs> Angry noises. Angry noises. I'm not convinced that's a bite. That's what I've been trying to pull it out recently. And it comes back with nothing on it, so... I don't know. I'm not convinced. But then it pulls it all the way under and nothing's on it afterwards, so... Maybe it was. Got the floats mixed up in my head. Left rod's float is on the right. Confuse me. Float stayed above water line for a bit. Typically fish on it. Nope. Either this is a really good fish or it's completely caught on the boat. But it's a really good fish. 1.2 kilo gibble.
reusable crucian, 780 gram. Almost said 780 kilogram, but that would be a huge crucian. Oh. Pushed up, swimming away, no fish. Reasonable one here. One point one kilo common roach. Not bad. Bobber all the way underwater, but nothing on it. You know, they made some changes to float fishing recently and to me, they said they made it more viable. It almost feels like they made it less viable. I was catching more fish before the changes. They definitely made it more realistic, though. impossible to put a rod pod down where you just picked your rod up from. Sorry. I'm a little cranky right now with missing some of these fish that I don't think I should be. Like that. That was an obvious bite. If I had waited, it would have let go and there wouldn't have been a fish on it. And it would have just completely disengaged and despawned. I even think that one has, yeah, that has a smaller hook on it too. That's probably more in line with what I'd expect from the fish here. Let my food get a little lower than I wanted to. Some of it is the walrus sticks are a slow lift. And so I think some things are I'm missing because of that. I may look at some fast action rods just with the way I tend to fish. Whereas you see how slow it takes to lift the rod up because they're a bit stiffer. And that is part of the rod. If you look at it, it'll say action slow. I'd have to look to see if there's a reasonable medium or fast action rod. let's go down to size 12 hooks just see if it's i'm using too big of hooks here a 
I'm not really catching the size of fish that would be needing the big hooks. Catching 61 gram fish on one odd hooks. Where the hook is bigger than that fish was. Tried to game the system a little bit there by pulling the rod without actually clicking to lift it up. Mm. I don't know what they changed, but whatever was changed has not done well for me in my brain feels like I miss a lot more fish than I used to well, I think things are bites that really aren't I am tempted to just get another bottom rod and do some full on bream fishing. All right, if that wasn't a bite, I was going to say words that rhyme with my name. Smallish crucian, but it'll do. And this used to be a 30, 40, 50 fish easy day for me. Now, 14, 18, whatever. And probably 20 times the fishes, the, the float's been under the water and I thought I had a fish on and don't. Or like that. Fish completely pushed the float out of water, was dragging it across the lake. But evidently didn't bite. Reasonable gibble there, up to 24% on bottom fishing. Don't have any points. Just wanted to check and make sure. I think there's a fish on. With it being pushed up there. I typically would have tried to pull that in. But with the way things have been going today, there evidently isn't a fish on. See? In the past, if they pushed the bobber up above water like that, there would typically actually be a fish on. Small gibble. But not anymore. That's a reasonable fish. Look, love. Looked a lot more reasonable than that. Wasn't even a marker. I was thinking it was about 800 grams.
Nice crucian. Maybe I just need to get mad at it and then I start catching fish. Like that last time I pulled the rod out, I was sure there wouldn't be a fish on there because I've tried it seven, eight times today at the same, same place that the float was. Granted, it was a small, crappy sleeper. And like... <laughs> Oh, game, you're frustrating me today. At least there was a fish on this one. One point one kilo gibble. Small fish, sleeper, not even a marker, probably just short of a marker though. That's a good fish. 1.6 kilo crucian. Small roach. Float mixes in with the reflection of the house. It's right in the window. It's right at the kind of just under the tip of the rod there. Top of the float is at the tip of the rod. Usually that violent bouncing would have been a bite, but I don't think it is anymore. Good fish. Probably six, seven hundred. Eh, just shy of six. Been seeing this rod getting nibbled on for a while. No, there is a fish on the bottom rod. Ah, angry. Angry Tucker. Three hundred forty gram roach. Two hundred gram roach. Another reasonable fish. Maybe not quite a marker, though.
I didn't see enough of the gold color on it for it to be a good crucian. Got about eight minutes left before I want to start thinking about wrapping things up. Three hundred and forty-three gram. And as we're getting into evening time, it's heart rate's picking up. So I'm enjoying that. Small gibble. Four hundred and thirty nine marker gibble. Do want to try with the wind being calm? Let's do 130% cast. Yeah, it still seems like it bounces back. It's not fish on two. Got it. Did not expect to get that fish. Glad I did though. Yeah, that time it didn't bounce back as much. I will, I'll admit that, but it still seems like to me going over a hundred percent on float fishing or telestick fishing just doesn't seem to cast well for me. 700 gram gibble there. I'll take that. know where this flute is completely underwater without a fish on it that's where it is because in soviet russia fish bites you I do need to remember to make the rest of the Sibylina porridge. Just looking at how much silver I had. Couldn't remember on this account. Plus we spent a bit to buy the stuff for Sibylina. I did that somewhat intentionally. I want to get up to 35% for garlic dough. So I spent some silver that I could have saved, probably should have saved for a bolo rod on stuff to make semolina porridge so we can look at getting to garlic dough quicker. Because at least right now, garlic dough seems to be the bait of choice. Or bring him over at wherever the heck that is out or at Old Bird. And we are getting to the grindy part of the game. I mean, we need 45,000 experience points to get to level 14. And I think we've gotten total up until this point, 97,000. So it is a grindy game. I've said it many times. If you expect to level up from one to 50 in a week it will never happen. There's times you will be fishing at level 
pointy for a month without leveling up. All you're in it for is the levels. Probably not the right game for you. We could boost it a little bit with an ultra light rod or light rod. Which is why my spin fishing account has leveled up a little bit quicker is it does get bonus XP for every fish, but it also hasn't made as much silver. And I think that's hurting that account at this point. Decent gibble. Kind of wish the statistics screen showed you've made X silver total. I don't think it does. No. I may wrap it up here when we get to midnight. In game. Go ahead and dig for more worms. think we did make the right decision coming over here instead of staying at old bird with the way the wind was and being mainly focused with floating I don't think that would have been successful it did look like the wind might have backed off a little bit later on in the day but couldn't really tell when that was going to happen so I'm still happy with the decision to come back to mosquito or winding. I didn't even think about winding, honestly. Probably should have thought about winding before right now. I'm going to go ahead and wrap it up here as we come close to midnight. We'll get one more set of free food. We're out of ground bait on the bottom rod anyway, so I've got more I could have put on it, but probably makes sense to just call it there. So let's go take a look at the cafe. I'm sure we got, I think there was a small gibble order if I remember correctly. Ooh, a crucian order popped in too. And a sleeper, or one sleeper short. So gibbles, we definitely got that. We'll sell these three that are worth nothing for four. Five common roach, we got that. Sell the non-markers for 10. Crucians, five for 9.58. Bet that's gonna be worth it. What was the smallest one of that? 227. So, crucian carp by weight. Yep, it's worth it. Tinch, close on the sleepers. There is a rough order we could probably get if we wanted to for 28. That's not bad. And we got one of the big perch and no chub here. Okay. So that was about 25, 30 silver and another 45 silver. So. 70 silver today, not bad. Plus the 10 or 20 we made over at uh, Berg, Old Berg before coming over here. So turned out to be a good day. Turned out to be a reasonable day. I did get a little frustrated missing some fish I think I should have caught, which that's going to happen, especially with float fishing. With bottom fishing, that's less likely to happen. But... It is what it is there. If we're looking at bolo rods to get a reasonable bolo rod that can support 6.2, so that's 385. 
for a king master if we go to with an s eagle that's also 6.2 so 200 the so two to 300 just for the rod that's not bad either 148 we would then technically need another reel to put on it We'd be looking at either the Lacerti 2s for another 100 silver or going a little bit higher. Uh, they did just release the Lacerti S2. So, I don't know. Something I'm going to have to think about what we're going to do next there, but don't have enough silver for that yet. But turned out to be a decent day overall. So, I appreciate everybody watching. Uh, we'll be back again tomorrow, and I hope everyone has a good one. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.